everybody. Mark in the Weather Office. It's Friday night, a special Friday night edition of our Weather Chats. And yes, still wishing it would rain, but instead what we're going to be talking about this weekend is wind, power shutoffs, fire danger, the things we don't like to be talking about at this time of year. Instead, I'd rather be talking about rain coming our way, snow to the mountains, chain controls, and all that sort of thing. But instead, we've got a we've got a pretty bad situation coming up this weekend um, because of because of the wind and the fire danger that goes with it. Um, if, if any of you are watching on TV, I, I may have, I, I did mention a couple of things that you may have seen. This weather situation is similar to what we had in the campfire, and it's similar to what we had in the wine country fire back in 2017, as well as a couple of other fire situations uh, that just I can't remember the names of. But this is not a good situation, and uh, it's one that you have to be aware of. And it's uh, because you, you, you have to be aware of your surroundings this weekend, Sunday night and Monday, because of the wind. And also, we're going to talk about the power shutoffs. And I'm going to show you the latest maps and to show you uh, where the power shutoffs are. Now, a lot of you in the foothills probably already have heard from PG&E. Maybe you get a text message or a call. They're likely to lose power. Uh, but I'll show you all the maps and we'll go through where, at least right now, where PG&E says that they're going to have power and where they're not going to have power starting on Sunday. So a lot of, a lot of things to get through on this, on this Friday night. Usually Friday's a little bit more laid back, but not this Friday. Nick's here from Modesto. Jason says good evening from Grass Valley. Mary says hi to me and everyone. Lacey says good evening from Marysville. Uh, Erica says hi from Crystal Lake, Illinois. Way to go, Erica. Hey, good evening to you. Brian says good evening from Placerville. Katie's here from Soulsbyville. Diane says greetings from a chilly and cold Twin Falls, Idaho. Jan says hi there from TGIF from downtown Placerville. Steve's here from Volcano. Paula says uh, hello from Ceres. Joelle, looking forward to the weather chat. Checking in from Sonora, where you're likely going to lose power. Bruce says hello from Grass Valley, another area you're going to lose power. Liz says hello from Stockton. We're going to be power shut off, not for Stockton. Stockton, you're going to be fine. Sharon says, good evening from Plymouth. Vicki says, uh, will it hit Oakdale? It'll be breezy in Oakdale, but it looks like Oakdale keeps power. Jamie says, good evening from Copperopolis. Ann says, I wish it would rain. Yeah, wish it would rain. That's, that's why my favorite song right now. Patty says, hi, lovely Friday evening. It is really nice. Hey, Jan's here. Says, hi, it's a gorgeous day. Got a bike ride before the wind comes. Good idea. And tomorrow is also going to be a nice day. For those of you that like to get out for a bike ride, golf, run, whatever it might be, Tomorrow's going to be a terrific day. Actually, I have a friend that's getting married or daughter's getting married tomorrow. It's going to be a terrific day for anything outdoors. So, yeah, the wind we're expecting isn't until the day on Sunday um, and then into Monday. But, yeah, tomorrow also a beautiful, beautiful day. Dan says, uh, good evening from Manteca. Manteca Dan. A little breezy here in the Delta. Dan says, howdy, everyone. Happy weekend. Jenny says, hi from Lodi. Chris Zine is here from Auburn. Chuck says, hi, everyone from Vacaville. So Tracy says, already booked our room for Sunday night um, at a motel that will have power. Way to go, Tracy. Mary's here from Oakdale. Gabby says, hello. Katie says, I just received a text, email, and automated phone call from PG&E that I might be losing power Sunday. We're getting better at alerting people. Nice. Armando says, hi, how are you? Well, I'm pretty good on this Friday night. Looking forward to the weekend. Mary says, hello from Carmel Valley. Isn't that nice? Virginia says, uh, thanks for the information from Browns Valley. You're welcome. Justin says, good evening from Eastern Fairfield and Travis Air Force Base. Um, Shannon says, got my text for Pioneer, Mace Meadows. So let me get to those, go, those maps, those pg e maps. Um, all right, yeah, let's let's go let's go to the web page. So this is the pg e page, and the areas highlighted in this orange color are where uh, they suspect they're going to be turning off power on Sunday. So you can see it's a wide area, from uh, Butte County, Plumas County, all the way down into Tuolumne County and even Mariposa County and Point South. We have spots in the East Bay. We have a lot of area in Napa County, Sonoma County, as well as Lake County, scattered areas in Calusa, Glen, and then Tehama and Shasta counties. So let's focus on a couple of spots first off. 
So in Plumas County, all these spots here, all around Bucks Lake, wide areas in here. Looks like a lot of area around Lake Almanor is going to lose power. The the uh, the timing, some of these these shutoffs will be as early as Sunday morning. So in Butte County, you'll notice that Chico is is fine. Let's go. Let's zoom in on on Oroville, because Oroville is pretty tricky. So the 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 downtown area is okay. You got that area in the middle of town, Old Town, um, has an outage. And then out toward the lake, that's where you get the bigger outage. Out toward Palermo, and then all the scattered areas out in here toward Bullard's Bar. Uh, look at the big area around Grass Valley. Grass Valley, Nevada City. Although, look at this area that's not in it. But Grass Valley, Nevada City, definitely in the power outage, as well as all these spots along Highway 20. Uh, toward Penn Valley, and... Uh, toward uh, Mooney Flat, Smartsville. I got that in for you there, Mary. Alta Sierra, looks like it's gonna lose power. Going down Highway 49. Now, get into Auburn. Most of Auburn is okay, but you get east of town. That's where you get the power outages. And then up Interstate 80. Through all these communities, once we get past Colfax and Alta and Baxter, they continue all the way up past Rollins Lake. Um, so Cool loses power. Georgetown loses power. At Wentworth Springs Road, all those spots lose power. This looks like Pilot Hill here at Salmon Falls Road. Let's get into El Dorado Hills because there are a couple of spots in El Dorado Hills that are going to lose power. So here's main main part of El Dorado Hills. But then you go, there's Bass Lake, here's Serrano. And so it's the area um, that's that's Green Valley Road right there. And so it's that area that's on the back side of Serrano. And then the other side of Green Valley Road, like Deer Valley Road in here, out toward Rescue. Rescue's going to lose power. Some scattered spots along uh, Folsom Lake. Let's head up uh, Highway 50. Cameron Park and Shingle Springs look like they're out of it, but you get up to... Um, Missouri Flat Road, then you're in it. S scattered areas, um, are, oh, it looks like Diamond Springs. Most of Diamond Springs is out. A lot of Placerville is in the power outage along Highway 193 to the north. Camino, Apple Hill, there's Camino. Here's Pollock Pines. Farther to the south into um, areas outside of Plymouth, a Fiddletown. But Plymouth itself is fine in Amador County. So this is Highway 49 here. So it's, and there's Pioneer. Pioneer losing power. So 460,000 customers. That's like a million people. A lot of parts of Calaveras County. Wow. Oh, this area down here, down towards Salt Springs Reservoir. I hadn't seen that area to the west of Highway 49. And then, then this is the area around Sonora. There's Sonora right there. Let's head up Highway 108 toward Twain Hart. A lot of Twain Hart right there, losing power. Farther to the south toward Groveland, we're also um, losing power. So let me go to Stanislaus County. Some of you are asking about valley locations. This is the only part of Stanislaus County. It's to the west of Patterson, up in the hills there. In, uh, Stanis, uh, in San Joaquin County, the only spots in San Joaquin County are, again, on the hill country south of Brentwood. Parts of the East Bay. And then um, Yolo County. So Vacaville is fine. There's Lake Solano. So it's all west of 505. And, um, and Fairfield, same thing. Fairfield's fine, but you go to the mountains to the west. And then the, the higher country of Napa County. Look, downtown Napa is fine, but on the hills around Napa on either side, uh, there's Sonoma. All this area to the north, all of this area will be blacked out. So there's Santa Rosa. Between Santa Rosa and Calistoga, all of that area will be without power. There's St. Helena. Calistoga's up here. 
right there. Um, and then into Lake County, the, the outages in Lake County look very scattered. I think they, they really have been trying to be more surgical with these. Look at these spots in Calusa County, just little spots here and there. But if you're without power, and these are some of the spots that are likely to go out first, this would be first thing Sunday morning. Some other areas may wait until Sunday afternoon or evening. So that gives you an overview of where we are expecting um, the power outages. And like I said, I'm sure that a lot of you have already been uh, notified that you are um, uh, by, by way of you know, text, email, phone call, by PG&E that you're going to be losing power. Um, so, so that's good. Now, keep it, one thing to keep in mind, one thing that we have seen in past cases is sometimes PG&E will do this initial map, and then during the day tomorrow they may adjust it. They might take some areas out. They may add some areas. It all depends on how their grid is and how the forecast is looking for some of these river canyons. So, um, so that's the that's the thing to keep in mind. Hey, Leroy's here. So, Mark, it's been a while. Why can't this high break down and allow dips in the jet stream? Yeah, it's just a seasonal thing, you know. Um, it's it's just the way the jet stream is set up right now. It will break down eventually, but I just don't see it happening. Uh, enough yet. Susie's here for Murphy's. It says today, beautiful day, fall at its best. Wishing for rain though. Uh, Ken disabled in Tracy. Tracy should be fine. Keeping power on in Tracy. Chris, I, I don't see any rain coming soon. Uh, Phyllis says got my email and text from PSPS and Mosquito. Yep, you're out. Nancy says, text here in Smith Flat around the corner from EJ. <laughs> nice. Nice. And Tracy says, um, yeah, we already got our call going off Sunday at 4. Mary says, we got a call, text, and email for power outage Sunday, 4 until Tuesday. Yep. Yep. Rodney says, hi from Lower Paradise. Uh, done with PG&E and their sh shutoffs. Yeah. Yeah. How high would the wind be in Lake County? Well, let's talk about the wind a little bit because that's that's what's causing all of this. So let's let me go to one of my favorite sites and I've shown you this before. Um, this is this is a site called Cansac and we are in the northwest quadrant and I'm just going to uh, go through this. Now this is the forecast from this morning. It hasn't been updated just yet. So this is um, this is Saturday morning, early Saturday morning. I'm just, I wanted to start here because the winds are going to be light and I want to um, show you the scale. Now when they do the scale here, they actually, they, this, the scale is not constant. By that I mean the, the scale actually reflects the highest wind that you'll find on the map. So you see this wind over here that's, um, let's see, 32, 34, 36, 38. So this is 40 mile an hour winds. A couple of little spots up in here, up in Nevada. So the scale is reflecting that. Just keep that in mind because that scale is going to change as I go through it uh, in time. So this is tomorrow morning, light winds. Tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow's a beautiful day. Let's get into um, this is Saturday afternoon. We actually have an onshore breeze tomorrow. This is really nice. A little breezy in the mountains, but this is this is the kind of wind you want. We'll have higher humidity tomorrow. That's going to be great. So yeah, tomorrow's just like I said, a perfect day to be outside. Let's get into the day on Sunday. So this is Sunday morning at 5 a.m. So there's Sacramento County. There's Butte County. So see these areas here. That wind's starting to come down the valley. This is the start of the north wind. Nothing in the foothills just yet. And you note that scale is suddenly higher. Now we've got some purple spots and they're right here in Shasta County. That is 40, that's, that, those are 50 mile an hour winds right there. But uh, f if you're in Butte County, there is gonna be some of that downslope wind in the Feather River Canyon, but that's, that's before the sun comes up on Sunday morning. This is three hours later. Notice how the wind is starting to stretch and come down south. Now we're starting to get that wind in Yolo County. This is uh, 
Sunday at 11 a.m. Notice the scale is even higher now. We have some spots that are up around 52 miles an hour in Shasta County. And this area of orange, which is sustained winds of 25 to 30 miles an hour, that's in the west side of the valley. Starting to get breezy around Sacramento, and we're starting to see the downslope wind kick in. And that's midday Sunday. This is Sunday at 5 p.m. This is when it's really starting to get real. Um, downslope wind here, downslope wind here. Look at that spot right there. That's just north of, well, it's right around Lake Berryessa. That area would have winds of, that's near the top of the scale, so we're over 50 miles an hour on some of the ridge tops here. And, and we're just really starting to get into it. Let's go six hours later. This is uh, 11 o'clock on Sunday night. Now, notice again the scale. Now the scale goes to 56, 58, 60. The scale now goes to 62 miles an hour. And we're seeing that in some of these spots on the west slope. There are some of these favored canyons here at the, um, in the, in the Feather River Canyon, Jarbo Gap. The Yuba River has some really windy spots at the base of it. Uh, the, the Rubicon, in the top of the Rubicon, there's a there's an observation site right up here at Hell Hole Reservoir that, that is notoriously windy. Same thing at Loon Lake, but that would continue down through Desolation Wilderness and down toward places like Georgetown. And for those of you familiar, there are, there is an extensive network in here of both SMUD and PG&E equipment, a lot of hydro equipments in here. Uh, but you notice these high winds, these areas shaded in brown, they continue all the way down into the upper parts of Tuolumne County. So this would include areas around Yosemite and Groveland. So those, those mountaintops could have, or those canyons rather, could have winds over 60 miles an hour. So again, this is Sunday night at 11 p.m. And you'll also note these little waves right in here. There's one here, one here, one here. So notice that the wave nature, that means the wind is coming down the valley. It's rising, dropping, rising, dropping. So you have these waves that actually extend offshore. It's really cool, the model picks that up. But on these ridge tops, you have winds that are over 50 miles an hour. Uh, let's go to, this is first thing Monday morning. This is as far out as the model goes. The winds will actually be decreasing during the day on Monday, but Monday morning, they'll still be very, very strong, that downslope wind. But I really think the strongest wind is going to be between maybe 9 p.m. on Sunday and 9 a.m. on Monday. To me, that's, that's going to be the key time. And when you have the, both the downslope wind as well as the strong winds here, that's very reminiscent uh, to me of, of the campfire as well as the wine country fire. And the problem is that the air is going to be very dry. I'll show you more on that here in just a second. And um, and the humidity is going to be, yeah, the air is going to be very dry. The fuel is already dry. And so any spark, whether it's from PG&E, and that's why they're shutting off the equipment, or somebody drying a, uh, dragging a chain along the ground, any small fire can turn into a big fire in a hurry. So that's the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight, is that you have to be aware of your surroundings Sunday and into Monday. We don't want another case of paradise. We don't want 80 people to perish in a fire. So what I want you to do is to, and when I say be aware of your surroundings, we do not have any existing fires going on other than the creek fire that's burning down south. That means if you start to smell smoke, and it's windy where you are, it's going to be windy just about everywhere, but if you start to smell smoke, that means there's a fire that could be moving toward you in a hurry. If I, if I was home on Sunday night, in the middle of the night, and I started to smell smoke, the first thing I'd do is go to my car and get out. I wouldn't bother getting anything. I would get out. I would drive away as quickly as I could. Then I'd get on my cell phone and find out what's going on. That's what I would do. And I think that that's what you guys need to do is because the last thing that you should be doing is waiting for law enforcement. I'm not saying you, you, you don't pay attention to law enforcement. Obviously, if law enforcement comes knocking on your door and says, get out, you got to get out. Um, but, but they're going to have so much to do. Sometimes you're going to have to take matters into your own hands. So if a fire starts 
and it's upwind from you. When you start to smell the smoke, just get in your car and leave. That's the, that's the best advice I can give you. Um, with the fuels being so dry, the air being so dry, and the wind being this strong, we're calling the fire danger extreme. And I think for those of you that know me, um, you know I don't use hyperbole. I don't use words like extreme very often. But this is going to be an extreme fire event, a potential fire event. Um, and we've seen it too many times in the last few years, and we just don't want that, that to happen again. There are so many things that can cause a fire, so even though PG&E is shutting off their equipment, which they have to do just to make sure that they don't start a fire because of downed trees, downed power lines, uh, but there are all sorts of other things that can start a fire. And if it, it, and any small fire becomes a big fire. It starts as five acres, becomes 50, becomes 500, 5,000 in a matter of an hour or even less. And you know, you just, you just need to be, that's why I say you just need to be aware of your surroundings and take matters into your own hands. Um, and so if you smell smoke, get out, drive away, drive away from where you're smelling the smoke. Basically go with the wind, basically. Go where the, the direction the wind's taking you as much as you can or out of your area and um, get to a safe place and then assess. Then you get on your phone and, and, and go to your sheriff, sheriff's department or whatever or Twitter or whatever it might be, KCRA, whatever it might be to find out what's going on. But the first thing you gotta do is get out. All right, I'm done, I'm done uh, preaching there. <sighs> Casey's asking about um, about Camino. It'll be windy in Camino, um, but for you know the thing about the foothills is that, um, and for those of you in the foothills, you know that your the amount of wind you see at your house. If you've lived in the foothills for a while, you know the amount of wind that you see at your house depends on which way the wind is blowing. Because if you have a hill to your south and there's strong south winds, well, you don't see much of that. Same thing when there's a north wind and if you have a hill to your north, you don't see much of that, but you get the south winds. If you're up on a top of a hill and you get the wind from every direction, then you notice it. Um, but, the, but a lot of areas in the foothills, because the foothills do this, a lot of areas are sheltered. So some, some of you get stronger winds from a stronger, a different direction. And Camino is a great example of that. Uh, there are some areas in Camino that are more exposed to a south wind. There are parts of Camino that are more exposed to the east wind that we'll have on Sunday night and Monday. So I can't give you a, a one speed because what you have at your house may be different two miles away. Robert, how does this wind event measure up to the wind event that occurred at the beginning of December 2011? I don't remember that one, Robert, but I think I think that one was a south wind event. I think that was with a storm. I don't think this that was a north wind event. And and those are completely different things. Uh, Vicky, um, why are you even going there? That's what I'm saying. Why even go there? Um, so, uh, but Vicky reminded me that. Um, so let's. Let's talk about the overall weather pattern here. Um, it's not a good one. So this is this is the pattern right now, and it's this system up here that drops to the south, and right here. This is not good. You have a high here, you have the low here, and you have the winds just being funneled down our way. So um, let me go to uh, this. And yeah, the NAM isn't updating. But this is this is the 18Z model, which is fine. Um, so I want to show you the dew points because this is this is incredible. I showed you this the other day. Now we're going to see some dew point recovery during the day tomorrow, and dew point is the best measure of how much water is in the air. The dew point is going to recover tomorrow with the onshore winds. You see this little area of green coming in? That's nice. Dew points up around 50. That's great. That's great. So this is uh, this is tomorrow night. That's perfect. That's what you want to see. You want to see dew points up around 50. But this is early Sunday. Watch this area highlighted in brown. This is the dry air that will come in 
with that north wind. And this, these are dew points around zero or below. That means there is very little water in the air. I mean, almost none. And look at that. This is over, that's over Placerville, basically. A dew point of minus 15, that gives you a relative humidity in the single digits. Um, so that's what we're talking about with this bone dry air. And this is the best visualization of it. Let me go through that again. And you can just see that dry air dropping our way with this strong offshore wind that we're going to see. And then that this is into Wednesday. And then next week, the air starts to modify a little bit. Let me go into the wind just a little bit and how this model will show it. This is only a couple thousand feet off the, off the surface. This is Sunday morning, this is Sunday midday. And you just watch this wind increase. And I usually use this as a gauge of wind speed or wind gust. This is showing 44 knots. And this is probably underdoing it a little bit because I think that other model I showed you is even better. But you get the idea that the wind is going offshore. Not much impact on the Sierra, but from Butte County through the Bay Area, uh, Napa, Sonoma County, as well as the foothills south of Highway 50, it's going to be, it's going to be a bad wind event. So. Um, a couple of things I, I want you guys to keep in mind over the weekend. Uh, one, we have this red flag warning in effect. Now, uh, red flag warnings, we've had, we, we've basically had them all week. But this one, <laughs> I mean, these come from the weather service. So I don't have any control over this. But, but I almost feel like saying, this time we really mean it. Uh, I'm really worried about the extreme fire danger. And that's why I highlighted it right here. Extreme fire danger. Very low humidity that I just showed you. These wind gusts of 50 are confined to those river canyons on the west slope, as well as the mountainous terrain of Napa Lake and Sonoma counties. So that's, that's what you got to keep in mind this weekend. Um, and then here's the, uh, here's the seven day. Tomorrow, beautiful day, sunshine, 76 light winds, beautiful day. The wind comes up on Sunday, lasts into Monday, tapers off. So by Tuesday, I think the wind will be tapering off enough that PG&E will actually start to turn power back on. And then the rest of next week looks nice, upper 70s to around 80. Also note the overnight lows will be quite a bit colder, except for early Monday morning because it's going to be windy. We're talking about overnight lows in the 40s, foothill spots down into the 30s. So yeah, we're talking about it getting colder uh, with, this, with, this very, uh, with this very dry air. So that's everything I've got for you guys on this Friday night. It's it's going to be a touchy weekend. Um, we have the, the power shutoffs that we've talked about. Um, but other than that, all we can do is, uh, is, you know, bear with the wind and hope that we don't get any fires started. Oh, one other thing I want you guys to keep in mind is with this wind, it's going to be breezy everywhere. Uh, for those of you that are business owners that have set up temporary tents, make sure they're secured. Those temporary tents you've set up, uh, set up for outdoor dining, make sure they're secure. They haven't seen wind like this yet. Um, also, for those of you that um, have patio umbrellas, take them down. Uh, you don't want those heading off into the neighbor's yard. Um, anything in your yard that is unsecured. We have see trampolines all the time end up three houses away. So all that kind of stuff, the stuff that can get airborne, I'm talking umbrellas, um, tents, I'm talking um, yeah, trampolines, Make sure all that stuff is secured before it gets gusty Sunday and into Monday. I think that's all I've got for you guys tonight. Um, thank you so much for, uh, for joining. Have a good weekend. For those of you that are going to lose power, um, you know, bear with it the best you can. But for everybody, just stay aware of your surroundings this weekend. I'll be back next Monday. and Well, actually, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll hop on Sunday night depending on how things things are looking. And for those of you that are going to lose power, remember to charge your um, charge your equipment so that uh, so that you can check in online as we'll try to give you the best information we can uh, through uh, KCRA, uh, either Facebook pages or KCRA itself.